Welcome to another weekend of working on this camp. We ordered a few more of the things that we needed and uh, some of them came in. The Amazon shipping is just not, you know, the usual two day shipping that we are all spoiled with. So um, some of the stuff came in and we're gonna put that in this camp today and then hopefully get the fabric put on the door to refinish the marine fur there because it's not looking so great. Here's the stuff we got so far. So these are tension rods for the fridge and some of the cabinets to hold stuff from moving around. We got new strainers for the sinks to make sure that we don't get a clog like we had before. Thermometer for the fridge. This is a gas detector. We also have a smoke and a carbon monoxide detector in this camp already, but we wanted uh, something to detect like a propane leak. And then this, I finally got the waterproof toilet paper holder, which I'm really excited about because that was annoying. And then underneath here is a bamboo shower mat that's gonna go inside the shower to just like lift you up a little bit out of the water. Oh, we have to charge it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, next project on the list, the door. It's a little hard to see with the sunlight, but uh, especially at the bottom here, it's got to go. So hopefully I have enough glue and spray adhesive to get the fabric to stay in place because one of the things I ordered that didn't come in yet was the extra hot glue, but I have a few sticks, so I'm going to see if I can make it work with the spray adhesive. Before I started to refinish the inside of the door, I spent a lot of time on scamp forums and figured out that most people who pull off the marine fur end up regretting it because it's so good at insulating and preventing condensation. So I figured out the better option was to cover it. And I got this special fabric on Amazon. It's almost like a really soft burlap that has a water resistant treatment on the surface, which is good if the door is open and maybe it drizzles a little bit. But I secured the fabric all the way around the outside with clothespins and then I started to use a spray adhesive to get the fabric to stick to the marine fur and then I just went around and opened up the middle so that you could still see out the window. And I used my hot glue gun to tack down the ends and uh, it actually came out pretty well. The only issue was that I didn't anticipate the door being as snug as it is. So now when you close the door, you just have to give it a little extra push to make sure that the latch closes. So there's the finished product. It's actually pretty good. I have a couple other little things I need to fix. I'm gonna get some edging to go around the extra fabric I put around the lock. The uh, one thing that I didn't really think about was that now the seal around the door is a lot more snug and it's kind of hard to close the door. You have to kind of push it. I mean, it locks, but it's, it takes a little bit of pressure because the fabric added some thickness to the door, but it's all right. We put the door pull back on so that you can close the door from the inside, but then the drill died so we didn't get to put the window cover back on yet. In the bathroom I've got the waterproof toilet paper holder on there, which has a neat little shelf. I don't know how much it's actually going to hold, but a um, little shelf that you can put things on. And there's the bamboo floor mat. I wish it was a little wider, but because of the length, this was the widest one that we could find. It might add something to it to make it a little higher and wider eventually, but it's kind of nice to just have that extra bit of height, even just the way it is right now. So the next task, I'm going to take apart the bed, clean underneath there, and uh, put everything back together because I'm waiting for the mattress encasement thing that I ordered. Um, it's just like a zipper thing that goes over the cushions and all the pillow toppers that we have on there to just protect it. It's waterproof. Make sure that everything stays really clean. I took out the mattress toppers. We have two because the scamp cushions are very firm 
And then I pulled out all the bed cushions so that I could start cleaning. There's all the stuff that's usually in the scamp. It's kind of funny looking without all the bedding in there. We've never actually taken it out. So that's what's underneath the cushions. And this thing is supposed to turn into benches with a table, but since we have the layout with the table over here, we've never felt the need to do that. Um, but there's a pretty good storage space underneath there. Not the easiest storage space to get to, but uh, could definitely throw some, maybe we'll put our, our backpacking stuff underneath there if we're not gonna use it for a little while. And then under here, it's actually, it's really impressive how much storage space the Scamp has. Under here is the Gore-Tex liners that go on the windows in the winter. We haven't used them yet. And the Reflect-Tex also to insulate the Scamp better in the winter. And then we have um, dehumidifier, toolbox, and some extra bags back there. And then on this side is one of the water tanks. I think this is the fresh water tank. Pretty sure that is the fresh water tank right there. All right, so I'm gonna clean underneath here and vacuum it and all that good stuff and then put the bed back together. I pulled everything out of the storage and figured out how to set up the table the way that it's supposed to be when it's not a bed and um, I don't really like it. It's kind of, I don't know if there's something that's supposed to go underneath here or what, but the table is super sloped. <laughs> I don't think anything would stay on it and it's kind of wiggly. Um, so I'm glad we have the side table and we don't have to actually use this table. I think this is much better as a bed. So I'm just gonna clean all this stuff underneath here and then switch it back to the bed. I cleaned everything really thoroughly but then I went back through and caulked any little openings or cracks because you may know how much I don't like spiders and I really don't like them anywhere that I'm going to be sleeping. We've been working pretty hard these last few weeks getting the scamp all fixed up and ready to go and uh, working on videos and really just all sorts of stuff on the weekends. So uh, it's like, almost halfway through July and we still haven't been to the beach even though we live literally 15 minutes away. That's kind of the norm though. It takes us a little while to build up the courage to go to the beach. So we decided that uh, Grill Master Patrick is going to cook dinner and we're going to pack up dinner and go down to the beach. So we have a, a locals secret. We always like to go to the beach on Sunday night. It's just the best chance of not having a crowd. So we're gonna see how it goes tonight. We are going into Brigantine, which is uh, definitely not the closest beach to us, but it's the one that we usually go to because it's where Patrick used to be a lifeguard and it's where we thought that we could bring the dog. I know in the past we've gone to the north end of Brigantine all the way at the end of the island and we, I think we took Redford there once before, yeah. right? I went to check the website right before we left and it said they, I think they changed it where it's the um, the normal like between March through September because of the migratory birds, uh, you can't have dogs on the beach, which I get. But, um, so he had to stay home. And you might also notice that we're driving my car, the electric car, not the Jeep because we still have not found the enormous spider that is running loose in Patrick's car. How he's driving it around, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm not getting in it until we have a dead spider. So uh, yeah, we're taking the leaf. Brigantine is actually the island just north of Atlantic City and to get there you have to go through Atlantic City and take the single bridge that takes you on to Brigantine Island. We 
when you get to the far north end of Brigantine, there's a seawall that you can walk on top of, and we usually go all the way down to the end of the seawall. And this is where you can drive your car onto the beach, and a lot of people like to go fishing, but it's usually less crowded down at this end. So no dogs this side, yeah. When we got down to the beach, there were actually a ton of dogs running around, and we figured out that we could have brought Redford. So you can have dogs on the beach between the end of the seawall and before you hit the wildlife refuge during this time of year. For our picnic on the beach, we packed some grilled vegetables. I made a kale salad with some of the vegetables that we picked up at our CSA farm share for the week. And then Patrick made some grilled shrimp on shish kebabs on the grill. And then the hard part was trying to eat without getting sand and everything, which is always a challenge. Every time we come to the beach, especially at night, when most of the crowds have left and the colors in the sky are reflected in the wet sand, I always ask, why don't we do this more often? But it seems to be a pretty common thing with the locals. You kind of get tired of fighting traffic or trying to find a parking spot and all the kind of inconvenient things that come along with going into a shore town, but we are pretty lucky that we live just a short drive away from such a beautiful beach, and I always think that we really should take advantage of this more. As the sun went down, we packed up our stuff and headed back to the car, and we both agreed that we need to try to make this a more regular thing so that we can enjoy the short summer that we get at the Jersey Shore, and hopefully we will be back to do this again before the summer is over.
injustice The next president to be The news and watch hear your career It's time for you to face those fears And it's all fair To be aware and I'll be there So don't be scared Just take a deep breath of air And one, two, three to ten You begin to focus again And the